This is a 1991 Land Cruiser Prado. It is a body on frame, solid axle, coil sprung, turbo diesel, manual transmission Land Cruiser. If you don't know what a Prado is, a Prado started out anyway, and this is a 91, so it's a first generation Prado. Prado started out as what really amounts to a trim level version of 70 series Land Cruisers. If you're familiar with 70 series, um, from the front of the front doors back, all 70. From the front forward, from that same point forward, is Prado. So the major difference between Prados and Land Cruisers are engine choices, the front clip. Uh, Prados are all coil sprung instead of leaf sprung. And they all came equipped with turbo diesel four-cylinder engines where 70 series in this timeline only came with five-cylinder and six-cylinder non-turbo diesel engines. Um, and Prados are all 12-volt electrical versus 70 series all being 24-volt electrical. Isn't really a major difference in that so much you can feel, but say when you have a headlight bulb go out, I would much rather have the Prado or I guess headlight whole thing because they're sealed beams. Anyway, uh, this was a one owner vehicle and it has been our vehicle for the last year. Uh, we finally got something else and so we're gonna start driving that. But we have been daily driving this and this has been our car, our truck, our vehicle that we drive and live with every day. So I'm particularly attached to this one. Uh, I am biased, but I also think it's absolutely gorgeous. It's completely original stock, with the exception of the wheels. It came with these downsized 15-inch wheels. It originally came with 16s. Um, and it actually came with the first-generation KO2 BF Goodrich with white letters, so I just simply replaced them because they were old and cracked. Because uh, why mess with perfection? This Prado is also a narrow body versus a wide body. Uh, if it's somewhat difficult to see if you're just kind of glancing over all of them. But 70s also came in narrow and wide body variants, and basically the biggest thing about wide versus narrow is that there's no extra fender to give it like a sort of bulldog look attachments over the wheel wells. So this is a narrow body. I actually prefer the narrow body looks. I think it looks cleaner. Um, and when we were driving around, I didn't have the bull bar attached to it because it's just not my style, but it does come with it. Um, but yeah, I particularly like Prados in general uh, because of just how they are. They're as tough and as strong and as reliable as a typical 70 series Land Cruisers, but just a little bit more edge of comfort. The other major difference between Prados and 70 series is, I believe, all Prados came with rear discs, where not all 70 series came with rear discs. Then, of course, it's got air conditioning, power windows, and all that stuff. This is also an EX5, which is the top trim level for the Prado. Um, so it has all the goodies, upgraded fabrics, sunroof, power windows, all that sort of stuff. Uh, it's also a manual transmission because, of course, it is. Five-speed. But, yeah, we've had this for about a year now, and I've been daily driving it. We've probably put... 5,000 miles on it. We don't like commute or anything, so that might not seem like a lot of mileage for a year, but it is for us. Um, man, what to say about it? Well, I said I adore this truck more so than most vehicles that we have or that I'll sit here and I'll talk about. It's like I like ruggers and I like that sort of stuff. But this one has been our <laughs> workhorse, if you can call it that. <laughs> We're just, you know, driving to our parents' house and going to the grocery store and stuff. So it's not like we've taken this overland or whatever, although it would be perfect for that. Um, all right, well, specifically to this Land Cruiser, uh, it's in phenomenal shape. It has uh, 96,000 kilometers. I'll have to look at it specifically when we get inside, but. So very low mileage, especially for the year. Um, I haven't found any evidence that it's been repainted, but it's very possible it has been. This is the original color and scheme that it came with, so it hasn't been color changed if it has been repainted. But if it has been, it's been a very good job. 
Uh, you can tell, this might not show up on camera, but the hood has been repainted because the metal flake doesn't identically match the metal flake on the fenders. Not something that you can see in passing or you might not even be able to tell here on the camera, but if you're here with your actual eyeballs, you can see it. Not even close to a knock against it. It's just the reality of it. I'm not exactly sure if the EX5 package also gives you color-coded mirrors, but the mirrors are the same color as the paint here. And I've seen Prados that have like chrome mirrors, so they're not color-coded. I don't know if that was just an option or something bespoke to this trim level. Uh, since we've had it, I've replaced the batteries, changed the oil, of course. Um, got new tires on it, gave it a tint, and upgraded the speakers and stuff, and I'll tell you about what I've done to it in there. But basically, it's completely stock, with the exception of the wheels, and that's how I like it. Um, I think I already mentioned that we didn't drive around with the bull bar up front, because it's not our style, but putting it on there, because obviously we're selling it now. Comes with the original Land Cruiser Prado tire cover, um, which is cool because that's how you know it's a Land Cruiser back here. Prado EX5, Toyota four wheel drive, um, and I believe this is the dealership. I don't remember where it was, but Toyota diesel. So, yeah, uh, Prados are comfort oriented, sort of like a forerunner Land Cruiser, extremely tough body on frame, solid axles, all that stuff. Just much more compliant, much more comfortable than a 70 series. And because of the turbo, even though this is only a 2.4 liter straight four versus say a PZ, which is a five cylinder or an HZ, which is a six cylinder, we've driven them all. Uh, this is actually pretty peppy compared to those just because of the turbo. Um, right, so let's go over the condition. Uh, the bull bar has these stains here from some um, fog lights that must have been mounted. They weren't on it when we got it, and they must have just dripped because that's stained in the actual bull bar itself. Don't have the fog lights equipped, but you could certainly equip them. <sighs> dent here, dent here, you can see kind of the wave and just various bumper scratches and things. And of course in Japan, they have to have a front plate. So that was there here in Florida. We do not, so it is not there. Toyota grill turbo, which is kind of obscured by the bull bar, which is another reason we took it off because it looks really good without it. So no rust, no rot, no corrosion, just very, very good and very clean. These aren't paint marks. This is me washing it and the water dripping. So you got to wipe that off. Um... Yeah, I mean, I'm <laughs> sitting here rolling around and you can see. Some more of that dripping stuff. No, oh, and some bird shit, cool. Um, there is some more scratches and things. They're really small and minute, but they're there. And some are on the keyhole because of course, shoving the key in. But yeah, just a very gorgeous peak Toyota's design. I truly, honestly love these things. Uh, these wheels, they are unmarked, or at least I couldn't easily see them, uh, but they're two-piece. The outside is chromed steel, I think. I'm not positive. It might be solid aluminum, too. The inner part that's bolted out of the center, that is absolutely aluminum. And I think they're pretty decent looking. They're pretty nice. Only got four of them. The original spare back here is the original 16 inch Toyota wheel. But it's more like a detail thing anyway, so I just left it. Uh, I didn't get the original wheels with it, so otherwise I really would rather have those on it. But these aren't so bad. Um, what else? What else? I guess really not much. It's very pretty. Oh, here's a, right here, there's a chip. But as you can see, the original paint is underneath it. And I believe that's, the new paint has been chipped off, but the old paint is still underneath it. My guess is that this was sun damaged 
more than anything because it's just a thing that happens. So they probably repainted it because of that. So yeah, uh, as you can see, it's got power windows, four doors. Uh, they all go down, of course. And we did get them tinted, sunroof, and then the backs here, and this is on all four door 70 series with the long wheelbase like this. These windows pop out, which is kind of cool. Not all of them have the third row seat in the back, which you'll see. So I don't know if I said this already, but if you're familiar with US market 80 series, they have these three third row seats, kind of small, but they can fold up and like kind of hang from the inside. This comes with that. Uh, we had them removed. It's just some bolts to remove uh, because, well, we don't need them. But installed for sale, so, because they come with it. So, yeah. I mean, as you can see, completely clean. Solid, clean, and very, very pretty. Uh, so, yeah, let's go inside. It's a little dirty in here. Uh, I haven't fully cleaned it. Well, actually, I've only cleaned the outside. I haven't cleaned the inside, so you're gonna see life in it, but apologies. So because this is an EX5, it has this sort of like microfiber suede, but this is like, you know, the early 90s, so I'm sure it had a different name. But it's on the door cards here, and it's also what the seats are made out of. It's very nice. Um, it's just something that I've only seen on the upper trim level versions of Prados. Otherwise, you'd get normal fabric. So here's your driver's side door. Again, completely solid. All original, original running boards, original mats even. Um, power windows, you get automatic raising and lowering of the driver's side window, which is kind of cool. And then in here, we'll look very familiar if you're familiar with 70 series. This is a 70 series dashboard, steering wheel, shift mechanism, uh, even seating position. It's all the same. Seats are much more robust though, um, and they're sportier, so. You go, you get power lumbar support for the driver's side. You get the little embossed turbo in the top with that microfiber-ish suede alternative. Both the passenger and driver also have the suspension seats, which I fucking love these things. But basically it's like, if you've ever driven a large truck or a city bus or something and they have the extra suspension on the seats, you get them here and they're very nice. Uh, this is a five-speed manual, which of course it is, prefer it. It's a very stout, pretty smooth shifting transmission too. Um, and the other thing about all Land Cruisers is they're not fast. They're torquey, and they'll get you anywhere you wanna go. You're just gonna kinda take your time. So don't expect a speed demon in any of these, but that's not why you have one. You have one to effortlessly glide to your destination over absolutely everything. Uh, seating position in 70 series, because this is a 70, so this will account for all of them. Uh, you sit like you're in a chair, very L-shaped legs, and just a very clean layout. Instrument cluster here, fuel gauge, battery charge, or sorry, temperature gauge, or sorry, geez, I'm screwing up all the time. <laughs> Let me start over. Oil pressure gauge. So basically, when you're, these little brackets here, that center section, that's basically when you're under load, that's where you want it to be, and it is. But at idle, it'll be closer to low, or if it's off, it'll be totally off. Battery meter, if this was a normal 70 series, that 16 would say 32, but it would be the same gauge. Fuel gauge, temperature gauge, mileage, which is in kilometers, but they call it mileage anyway. RPM gauge, and then you also get a little turbo light. So anytime the turbo is spooling, that lights up green. It's kind of cool. Original steering wheel, stocks. Over here, the little indicator telling you when you're supposed to change your fuel filter. Preheat, because this is a diesel. So basically glow plugs, so you click it over. Energize the system, that light will go out, allowing you, or telling you when you can turn it on. I'm in Florida, doesn't get cold here, I hardly ever have to wait. Power hub lock, press that, locks the front hubs. 
and you get push button four wheel high. So if you're just driving around and you need to get it in four wheel drive high, you simply just press this button along with the hub lock too, of course. And then it'll engage the four wheel drive system. But you also have low range. So if you need to do some serious climbing, come to a stop, put it in four low with the hub lock and you're good to go. Five speed, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, when first starting to drive 70 series, this feels kind of far away from you, but you get used to it very quickly. Heat controls, um, air conditioning, heat, all that stuff all works perfectly. Power mirrors, which also work. Original stereo system, get tape player up here, CD player down here, little info pod, which again does work. Altimeter which is always zero because I'm in Florida, but you can adjust it. Uh, and then the inside and outside temperatures in Celsius, which again, function. Uh, this was a one owner vehicle, but they were smokers. It did have a slight smoke smell, but since we've been living in it and we don't smoke, that's gone away. Uh, there's no burns on the seats, but there is evidence. Like if you look down here, cigarette ash dropped in this center console thing. But you know, whatever. Um, oh, and for the stereo system, you notice this wire coming out. So I've installed a line bypass, which hijacks the FM signal antenna. So basically you have this tuned to, I think it's 87.9 FM. And then the box that I've installed will feed via wire. So it's not broadcasting whatever audio source you want to come in. And since I have one of those stupid ass phones that needs a dongle, well, it's got a dongle on it. But basically that's a way to get auxiliary input with the factory control system. So all this still works, the lights, everything is totally fine, and more importantly, it looks the part. But you can pipe in whatever music you want. Clock, rear defroster, rear wiper, glove box. Yeah. It's just, it's a nice peak toed truck. Your sunroof controls, or just sunroof works perfectly. Um, Go to the passenger side. I can't be objective about, well, pretty much any vehicle that I'm attempting to sell, but I'm particularly fond of this one. <clears throat> oh, so same thing, door cards, just clean the same sort of suede fabric. Only one window control over here. And you do get um, central locking from that over there. So basically you stick the key in can twist it, it'll lock everything, untwist it, and it'll unlock everything. Passenger seat, same sporty bolstering. Turbo. Right. So, passenger side. It's just real nice. Glove box. Oh, these are the, um, they never were installed, but they're basically these things down here. See that hole? These are supposed to be installed to keep the mat right here from shifting around on you, but the original owner never did it and they're still in their plastic, which is kind of a neat detail. Um, yeah, it's, it's just real nice. Nice, comfortable, sit upright, lots of space, tons of headroom, glorious sunroof. Um, not much else to be said, it's just real pretty. The back. This is a pre-1993 uh, Prado, and this is true for pretty much all Land Cruisers, um, even Pajeros and things. So there must have been a change between 1993 and 1994 in Japan. There's no shoulder belts back here, just lap belts. And the third row seat also has just lap belts. Um, in 1993, they transitioned to where they do have shoulder belts back here, and they also have shoulder belts for the third row seat back here. But this is an early one, so you don't get shoulder belts. Just lap. And this is an EX5, so you also get this little rear heater control here. So it's all encased in this. So you can see the top of it right there. 
So there's no air vents or anything back here, although it kicks out tons of heat and the air conditioning works great, so it does eventually get back here. But if you're cold, you can click this on and get yourself some heat. Or just blow the fan if you want, I guess. And the, of course, the rear door cards back here are also very good. So yeah, this seat is fully back and I'm about 5'10". So pretty decent space. Original floor mat, original carpet. There you go. And so technically this is a five, six, seven seater because you can have somebody sit in the center here. Although I wouldn't want to be that person, but technically seven seater. And then you can also, let's push this down, fold these seats forward. And this would be how you would get into the third row seats. And then also if you folded those third row seats up, folded these up, you'd have a flat cargo floor. Let's sit in the very, very back. <laughs> so, uh, not, not for adults but back here. I mean, it's just not the most comfortable thing in the world. So only a seven seater in the most technical of terms. Uh, if you've got small kids, they can sit back here, of course, but not adults. Although with that seat up, it's not so bad. And we'll go look at the other door just to... Give the look, very clean. All the rubber, all the glass, all the power windows, all that stuff works just fine. And then the back, cool 70 series Land Cruiser detail, which is basically barn doors. They might have other names too. So here's the rear. Um, the other thing about the EX5 is it came with an upgraded stereo system and I've replaced all these speakers. I didn't replace this one, I just repaired. This is just a subwoofer. So in the door back here, it's a factory part, uh, which is nice because it sounds pretty good. This isn't like a super booming, banging, booming, banging system. I just want music to sound good and so that's what we got. Uh, here's the rear door cards. No cool suede fabric for you this time, just vinyl. It is kind of chowdered up on this edge but it works just fine uh full tinting so these are tinted we had this done the backs here all the other windows windshield washer fluid is back here so this is how you refill it it's just a bag that hangs in this back panel and then your sprayer would spray on this because you have a rear wiper and it of course works um let's Fold this up. So this is how you get the seats up. Ah. So if you're not going to use the third row seats, just take them out like we did. Basically there's three bolts here and here. And you can also take out the seat belt if you want. It's just a buckle. You just undo that. And then just take it out and set it aside somewhere. Um, I don't know if you properly looked at them, but they're made out of the same synthetic suede-like material. I suppose it might be microfiber, but feels more suede-like. <sighs> right. Well, here we'll fold this one up too. So quite a bit of room actually back here, uh, especially if you remove these seats and hell, if you're not gonna use the back seats, you can remove those too. Um, this is as large as a normal 70 series Land Cruiser. So if you've seen people on Instagram and stuff, overlanding those, this is just as capable. All four door long wheelbase Land Cruisers also have this. So this lid is wood and that's factory. This isn't something that was added. This is a factory part turned into plastic in 1993, but you just got a little extra 
in-floor cubby. And then to show you how clean this is, there it is. But yeah. Uh, I'll put these down because I don't like them obscured the view when we're out driving. <laughs> Apologies for my struggling with this thing. Ah. Oh, and I can show you this. The original wheel under here. Ooh, there it is. The original 16 inch wheel, 16 by six. Um, I believe this is the original tire. I don't know how old it is, but they weren't, these tires and these wheels weren't on it when I got it. So they just, they're not on it. If you want actually a legitimate spare, this size will fit on here, except I just didn't have a fifth one of these wheels to match. So for style reasons, I just kept this. But if you're gonna replace the wheels anyway with whatever, then just get five and bolt it to the back. Although I really do like this hard plastic cover. It tells everybody what you've got. There we go, okay. Pop the hood and show you the engine compartment. Yeah, performance, it's fairly slow. Still do highway speeds though. So 70 miles per hour, not a problem. Just takes a little longer to get there. Um, fuel economy, just general around town mixed city highway driving is about 18, which is the whole reason why a lot of people like diesels because well 18 versus what like the uh, straight six, 80 series sold in the United States, you know, something like eight. Anyway, so this is the engine bay. Um, Prados are also different than normal 70 series in that they are all EFI versus mechanical injection that they kept through, I don't know how long, but a long time. Uh, 70s had leaf springs for a long, long time too, so who knows. Um, the batteries were bad when we got it, so these are brand new, 11 of 18, so about a year ago, actually, because it's been long, long we've had it. The AC system was originally R12, but it was converted to R134 before we got it, so thanks for that, the previous owner. The oil filters it uses are basically, Toyota has one oil filter for all of these old Toyotas, so it's just the big filter, shares it with the highest diesel vans, Land Cruisers, Prados, everything that's diesel will take this. Um, yeah, so that's that. I mean, here it is. It's, a, <laughs> it's the engine. You can start it. Actually, no. Let's not start it. I'll take it for a ride, and then we'll start it then. And uh, then we'll go take it for a drive, and then... See what it's like to actually drive it around. All right. All right, let's go for a drive. Set this here. Start it up and we'll walk around it.
sure. The gate's open. Yep. Okay. series feel much larger than they actually are compared to any modern contemporary SUV diesel or otherwise positively petite they're just not particularly large we'll go for a short drive Snowbird season and it's Saturday, so ample opportunities for traffic. Uh, let's take it to the highway. Around town, this is totally perfect. Comfortable, smooth. Brakes nicely. of course work perfectly sunroof and as I say and these drive around type videos. Um, I always bring up the attention. So 70 series tend to get a lot of attention from a certain sort of person because they look like UN African Safari type like that in a, a very serious no-nonsense off-road sort of vehicle. And they're cool for that. This specifically attracts the same sort of older appreciative sort of people that would be driving around a Jeep Grand Cherokee Grand Wagoneer. Are those Grand Cherokees? I don't know. But basically a Grand Wagoneer, the very expensive high-end luxury Jeep SUV that they made from like the 70s up until like 94 or something like that. That's the presence this has, is a very handsome, solid, classical, up in the Oregon Pacific Northwest sort of look about it. A very appreciative sort of look and respect. everything works um, it's comfortable smooth good seating position you can see and everything no I still got the rear windows open oh well apologies if there's wind noise when we get to the highway but yeah, like I said uh, we've been We've been driving this for the past year. Oh, and it has 97,580 kilometers on it as of right now.
see a lot of these for sale. The LJ Land Cruisers. Most of them have automatics. I can't speak for what they're like because I've not had one. Because manuals are my jam. But with this engine, the 2LTE and an automatic, I can't imagine it would be entertaining to drive because like I said this isn't fast it's completely manageable with the five speed because you control the power but behind a, I believe it's a four speed automatic I just don't know what they're gonna be like and that's the vast majority of them are gonna be automatics I personally wouldn't like them but again if I did this would be an automatic and it'd be one of those but that it's a five speed makes it fairly special and in such nice condition, low mileage, and the highest end trim level you could get at the time. It's fairly unique. Besides being a Land Cruiser with a manual transmission and you sitting on the right side, there's nothing weird about this. It's just a very pretty, handsome, old school diesel off-road SUV. kilometers an hour right now which is pretend you didn't see that speed limit sign to be fair it did just slow down no problems at all with anything in it or on it I mean it's a Toyota Land Cruiser from the peak of Toyota so I mean what <laughs> What could go wrong with it? This is our most draw, most driven vehicle that we've ever imported. This specific Prado. As I said, it's been our main car. It's kind of a funny thing too. When you have something that isn't fast, but you're not like small, it's kind of relaxing to drive because you can't get anywhere faster. There's no point in rushing. So you just go, meh. Although I'll still lead off the line because people don't know the power that they have in whatever they're driving. It doesn't really matter what it is, but. temperature or whatever everything is perfect even throughout the quite warm Florida South Florida summers champ you end up getting used to if you're not already the temperature being in Celsius.
badly designed light. If we catch up to it, then he's going way, way too slow. <laughs> okay, yeah, there he goes. So doing highway speeds in this isn't a problem. It just takes a little while to get there, but it's a diesel. comfortable solid vehicle like this with a stick.
Prado is concerned, I mean, there's not really much else to say. It's just very solid, comfortable, diesel, manual transmission, truck. Absolutely use it as a daily driver. It's what we've been doing. If you had a family, be the coolest mom or dad in the world. Outfit it to go overlanding. Do that. Or just enjoy it like it is. turbo line. It's very slight. More apparent obviously if you're outside but Hell, what the fuck? That was really stupid, lady. Doesn't usually happen. Now, what's this person doing? What's happening outside the lankers is more exciting than what's in. Oh, I guess they're done. But hopefully this gives you an idea of what this is like. I mean, it's very much a thing of feel, how it feels in here.
very much exactly the sort of thing I like. It presents itself in a very authentic, solid, retro but comfortable and efficient way. You can certainly add tablets and stuff. So like in here specifically, this is a double din stereo system. So what you'll see a lot in Japan. And once they get over here is you can totally replace this with one of those touchscreen Android Auto dealy things and it would work just fine. I like my thing stock. So I like to keep everything like this, which is why I elected to go with this little line in adapter so I could still pipe in one, my own music. And this can be undone too. I didn't splice or cut any wires or anything to it. I'm tapping off a wire to get power, but you can undo it, no problem. The wiring harness is fully intact. That's another reason why I like this thing. Could lift it, put big giant meaty tires on it, put a super huge rack on it, outfit it back here, take out all the rear seats, make a bed, do all sorts of stuff. Sure it'll be very good regardless of whoever buys it from us decides to do with it. Oh, we got new wipers and ordered OEM keys as well, so it comes with a few more of those. Snowbirds are back. The uh, van in front of us is from Ontario. That's why they're going about 20 miles per hour under the speed limit. So be it. Yeah, this uh, 1991 Land Cruiser Prado. LJ77, I think. It's a fantastic vehicle. For all sorts of stuff. Even if you just want to have it and enjoy it and keep it as it is. Perfect. Outfit it and go over landing over forests and lakes and whatever. Perfect for that too. The most important parts about it the low mileage, 97,602 kilometers now, five-speed manual, fantastic shape, 